Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls Top Midfielder. Oh, let me start over again. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Marla Sletman, Reggae Girls Top Midfielder, and you're here on Ryan FC and Elite Sports. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to keep up all to date with Reggae Girls and Reggae Boys Top News. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good night. Whenever you're watching back the video and the replay, I know a lot of the Reggae Boys fans asking me, Ryan, why not interview some of the girls? You do so many interviews when it comes on to the president, the vice president, the gen sec, everybody. But they need to need they need to hear more from the reggae girls and stuff. And the truth be told, people, not saying I'm ignoring the reggae girls, but it's kind of difficult to get interview with the reggae girls for some reason. You know, I was a past player and it more easy to connect with some of my teammates them in the reggae boys, right? But recently, I've been speaking to a couple of the females them and we want to start the power of the reggae girls. You see the love we have for the reggae boys? We need to put some of that effort and that time with the reggae girls. Not only when them win, but also support them when them lose. And I think the reggae girls has done us proud. And I want you guys to support them. Me, I give a 15 ticket for the game against Canada in a Jamaica. I want the people them for come out. All of the people them want to jump and the joy in a Jamaica. Now are the time to get behind the female football. If Ryan LFC is getting behind it, why not Uno Fala? I want to know, full up the stadium. Now, the other day, we have a couple of reggae girls. Now, we have one of the top goalkeepers who play a part to take the reggae girls to the World Cup. But unfortunate, she missed out, out of the 23. I would love to know what she's doing right now to get back in that reggae girls team. But first and foremost, I want you guys to hit the like button, share it out down in the comment section. People, you know when you come on to name, I don't want to butcher her, her name. So I hope I don't. She can correct me. Me know never beat me. She will give me a pass, but me know when don't in the comment section never beat me. All right, but I've been make sure waiting too long at the back now. So good evening, Jazz. Hi. Do I do I do it the right way? Close. Yes. 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 Okay. My apology. You know why me have a lot of love for you. I am a goalkeeper. I was a goalkeeper. Really? Yes, I was a goalkeeper. You know, play at the highest level in Jamaica. So, you know, sometimes them ask me and when goalkeeper made a mistake. Ryan, what she did not do right, what she could do better. Same thing on the man's side. So, yeah, I have a lot of love for goalkeeper, but I must say I was training one of my partners. She was a goalkeeper. But I don't know if I have the time for train my partner again. Because she didn't take telling. She just told and she wanted to do things her uh, own way. You don't like that. It, it's not like that. No. I mean, I'm always open to learning. Um, even with me, like, I didn't really have training until, mm -hmm. like, university. Because I was a striker until university. You were a striker? Mm-hmm. University. Anyway, we're going to get into that. So <laughs> don't go any further. Okay. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. But first and foremost, tell us a little bit ab about yourself. Where are you from? How do you get introduced to Jamaica? Are you born in Jamaica? Are you born in Canada? Who are you? Tell the Jamaican people. Okay, so my name is Yasmin Jameson. Um, I was born in Toronto, Canada. My mother's Grenadian and my father's Jamaican. Um, I started playing for the Jamaican national team actually because my coach in Canada was Jamaican and he flew us out to Jamaica to play against the U20 team just for fun. And one of the coaches saw me, Coach Vin, and he asked me, he's like, are you Jamaican? And I was like, yes. So he gave me a Jamaica jersey, and I actually played against my team that I flew from Canada with. <laughs> so they weren't too happy about that. They also thought I was older than I was because I'm very tall. I was only like 14 or 15 at the time, and, and I ended up getting called into the U20 camp. Um, but I couldn't play until a little later. I missed like years because I was only 15 I, because I didn't have my passport. So... Right. Yeah, that's how I got called in to the Jamaican national team, just by fault. <laughs> wow. So you play against Jamaica, you play good, and Coach Vin Blake like you at that time. 
Yeah. So then the next match, we played two games. The next match, um, they gave me a jersey, and I played with Jamaica. Oh, my team. So, so oh, your team take it at that time. Flew you out from all the way from Toronto, bring it to Jamaica, and you play against them. I mean, I remember at the time some of the players weren't happy with me. We're also young. I was like 14 or 15 years old. So like they weren't the nicest at the time. But, you know, after and they saw like what an amazing opportunity it was and how happy I was playing with the girls. They were supportive after that. And my coach was over the moon. My mom was over the moon. Everybody was so happy. So at first it was weird. But I also gelled with the Jamaican national team like in two seconds. It didn't even feel like I just met them. We were vibing. We played well. And then we beat my team. So... <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. But that, that was a very good story. But tell us, at what age you start to play football, though? Um, I think like eight, seven or eight years old. Um, I started in ballet. My mom put me in ballet, but I was rambunctious. I wasn't paying attention in the class, and I was, like, all over the place. So I, my mom saw that I needed something that was more uplifting, upbeat. Um, so I played with the boys, and then um, I was a striker all the way through high school and then i'd play goalkeeper a little bit like half a match i played goalkeeper if they needed me just because i was tall and like i'm athletic so i can always you know change sports but i didn't have the training as a goalkeeper i would just you know throw my body down see if i could save the ball and i would save the ball um but it wasn't until university that i fully transitioned to a goalkeeper full-time wow so oh you take oh your family take it at that time your mom oh she take it at that time she said go for it or continue to play striker was it difficult for you to make that 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 decision to stop being a striker and to be a goalkeeper? My mom's always encouraged me to continue playing as a striker. Um, I just, I don't know. There was just something about goalkeeping. I didn't like it at first at all. I used to always be vexed in the net. I didn't want to play um, because I was scoring a lot and I just thought it was fun. I thought goalkeeping was boring. But when I got to the university level and I saw the training, I was like, oh, this is, this is really interesting. And like, I just want to see how far I could take it. Um, so no matter what I do, like, I know my mom always supports me. So it wasn't like a serious, serious decision. It was just in the moment type of thing. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. People smash the like button. Rico Dan, one of the biggest supporters of you. So I want to let you know. So I want you to give him a shout out, Rico Dan. Always cussing me, bro. Talk about the girls. Talk about the girls. I don't show the girls not much love. So, yeah. But you said you start to play at eight. Um, do your father usually to play or your mom usually play sports or did they, they are your family or your mom want to just say hey, let's put her in sports let's you know she can have a tour or we going to go to purchase something or you know or you just have that love or your parents usually play sports which one of them usually play sports so my dad's six foot six and he oh. played basketball and my mother played netball and she did track and field as well so I just think sports run in the family, but they never went to like any type of professional level. I think the highest they went was college or university. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, like I started in basketball, I loved it, uh, but I didn't think I was gonna grow into like the six foot height. I'm 5'10 and a half, 5'11. And uh, it was just too rough for me, basketball. So I just didn't like it. I just, I loved soccer and my mom didn't really know much about it, but at the time it was the cheapest sport to put me in. You don't need that much equipment. So she was like my manager and then she would like bring me to training. So I think it was really my mom that put me into soccer. Okay, fair enough. So you say start to play at college. So what do you study at university? So in university, I studied communications and media studies with a double minor in African studies and anthropology. And I graduated with honors. Wow. Wow. So why you choose football? Why not, you know, to further your you dig um to get a job in a degree. What about football make you football don't pay a lot? What grab you to still stay in football? So the agreement that I have with my mom is that I had to graduate first before I did anything else, which I understand. As a female athlete, you always have to have something to fall back on, which I, I understand. Um within my last year of university, I wanted to make the World Cup squad. So I moved to New Zealand while I was in school and I uh, did my finals and my exams in New Zealand overseas so that I can have a chance at making the 2019 World Cup squad. And like football just took off from there, but I've always known that I'm multi-talented. So if I were to go into anything else, it would be communications related in regards to sports. 
So I'm, I understand the power of media. Like I feel like with female soccer, we don't get that much exposure. So when I'm ready to retire from football, like I want to start my own company. I want to put a platform for the reggae girls, put a platform for female football in the Caribbean. Um, so some people like they just have football and that's it. But like, I know that there's other pathways that I want to take when I'm ready to retire. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Interested, interested. So tell me about a little bit about your father. Are you your father's um still around you when you're growing up in in, in Canada? Yeah, I, well my parents are divorced, um, but I still like have a decent relationship with my dad. Um he lives in Brampton and huh. yeah, I mean like he was around here and there, but I would say that my mom has definitely been a pillar in my life. She's raised me on her own. Most of my, the way I am today is because of her. Um, so big up my mom. But like, I'm not going to like shade my father either. He, he's done what he could based off of what he knew was good. So I appreciate that as well. Okay. You know, you know, the reason why request him for acts because we have this challenge. We have this problem with when a player born outside of Jamaica. Sometimes the player don't want to come and represent for the father side because of not having that connection, not that support. So why am I supposed to go and represent in for film country? You ever have that in your mind that, oh, no, I, no. One thing about me is that, and maybe some people might say I have a little bit of an identity crisis, but I was born in Toronto by default. My parents decided to immigrate to Canada. I could have been born anywhere. So nobody can ever tell me that I'm not Jamaican. Nobody can ever tell me that I'm not Grenadian. I'm Jamaican and Grenadian through and through. So I never felt like, oh, it's my father's country. I don't have any type of resentment towards him. I'm so proud to play for Jamaica. It's insane. So it was never a question of, oh, should I play for Canada? Should I play for anywhere else? No. When I had the opportunity to play for Jamaica, there was no question about it. And I ran with it ever since. Okay, fair enough. But you know, the team evolved. Mm -hmm. The national team keep evolve with better players. How do you, you know, because you're a part of it from it just start to kickstart the right and proper way. I know that you still working hard to get back into that team. What are your mindset? You are of something that from it start and now you're watching in your setting, still cheering on, happy for the girl. What are your mindset they're missing out on the World Cup? So I always say, and all my teammates know this, play for the crest in the front and they'll remember the name in the back. I've never played for myself. I've always thought that we're building something for the future generation. So if it means that I'm not a part of it, but they're still going to do well, then I'm happy with that. I'm not going to say that it's been easy. It's definitely not been easy but it's easier for me to be happy for the girls and happy for the team just because of my love for Jamaica and the love for the team. I want the team to do well. I want women's football in Jamaica to expand and, and grow. So if that means that I can't directly be a part of it, that's fine. I'll still do what I need to do to support the team from outside, which is what I've been doing. Also, I'm very close with a lot of the girls and they've been so supportive, checking in on me all the time throughout the year, calling me, making sure that I'm okay, making sure that I'm still training and I'm not giving up. So I think that's what also made it easier and made me so happy to wake up at five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning to come watch the girls in the World Cup. Wow. Wow. Very proud. Very proud. Very proud. I hope the man might take a page out of the girls and book it. I tell you, because when the man they get picked, I'm going to think women um, have more ego. Mm. with not getting picked and chewing up them hand on them beer, but not like that. No, I mean, it definitely hurts. I've definitely spent a lot of times crying about it. But then again, like, I look at the bigger picture. If you're selfish and you're just playing for yourself, I would understand. There are players like that. But if you understand what it means to put on that jersey and what it means to play for Jamaica, it's easier to take a step back and say, okay, like, it's bigger than myself. It's not club football. This is a country that we're speaking about. So if I have to take the step back to make the country better, then that's fine. Okay, fair enough. So what are you doing right now? Are you still in football? Um, you said you start to play in college. No, you, you are a part of a club? You say they have a part of a club. Are you still part of a club in Canada? Yes. So I was playing for Simcoe County Rovers in Canada. This is our highest level of football here. Um, it's semi-professional because we don't have a professional women's team in Canada yet. We're still fighting for that. Um 
And I'm currently negotiating contracts to go somewhere, hopefully by September or October of this year. And the time that I wasn't with the national team, I've just been training, which is, it's interesting that like the time that you're not getting called in, it's like, this is the most fit, the most confident I've been in my life. So I've always just been told to stay ready. Um, if a call happens, a call happens. I'm grateful for it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But either way, like I still want to improve as a player and my individual game. And that's my focus so far. It With Canada doing so well in female football, why take Canada so long to have a professional sports where they pay the players on the female side, just like the, 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 the American? Yeah, it's definitely frustrating. I just think that the way that Canadians look at sports is not the same as the U.S. Like in the U.S., people are representing their high school and their college up until they're 80 years old. They're proud of it. But in Canada, it's not the same in terms of sports, especially for soccer. People don't care that much about soccer like that. Um, but it's getting better. There's going to be a professional league in 2025. And I'm just like, I'm 25 right now. I'm still young. Goalkeepers peak at like 30. So it's still time. But I just wish it happened sooner because like even Canada winning the Olympics, the gold, and it didn't even make a shift in the country is kind of sad to see. Wow. 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 2025. That's when Mr. want to start fully focused on podcasts. You know? mm-hmm. really don't want to not working for anybody. That's my goal to just do football show, pantapa show, pantapa show for my job. And you know, it's just amazing. Are you happy where the sports, especially this World Cup with the feedback with female football? Are you happy with the female football, the level at it right now? More people is talking about it. This World Cup was definitely a testimony to mm. the fact that a lot of younger or like smaller countries don't get the exposure or the opportunity to compete. So people thought by making this Women's World Cup larger, you're going to see people get licked like 7-0 um, in terms of scores. But you see Haiti, you see Jamaica, you see the Philippines challenging these bigger countries, France, England, Spain, struggling against the smaller nations. So I just think that just giving the opportunity to expand the World Cup and let these other countries come in is great. Because a lot of people look at the Caribbean, they look at CONCACAF and they think about like Mexico and the U.S. and Canada and like the other Caribbean culture countries are like looked down on. But it's just because we're not given the opportunity, we're not given the platform. So now I hope people can see that like Jamaica, like we're not here to play and like you should respect us just like you respect all these other teams and that, you know, the game's growing, the gap is closing and I think that's great. Okay, fair enough. So tell me, tell me, tell me who is your favorite player on the team and why? Um, I couldn't pick just one. I would say that the, my favorite players that I speak to like daily, Chantel, Denden, um, Chanel, Chinyi, these are the girls that I would talk to every day. Like, uh, these are my best friends, my sisters. Um, okay. other than that, I'm like a floater. I don't like to just like stay with one group of people or, you know, catch up with another. Like I'm, I'm friends with everybody. Um, okay. I think that's also important in terms of team chemistry. Like you could put me in a room with anybody. I'm going to get along with them. Yes. Tiffany. I love Tiffany. Anybody like you can name anybody, but my main girls, the girls that I talk to every day would definitely be Denden, Chantel and Chanyelo. Okay, fair enough. Surprise, because you know me and then they went to school together and play soccer in the gym. Really? And, and, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. ask, ask her about Rima, man. Rima, uh-huh. man, the captain of the excess and Manning Cup team. Yeah, I play. Um, actually, me and I are in the CMPE class, too. Really? You know? So I saw the talent, left foot strong, you know, always playing with the boys. You know, she have something special, you know what I mean? So, yeah. One of my favorite players, but my favorite player is on the team is Stephanie Cameron. I just, she just sweep my foot away, man. She just full of vibes. Yeah. She just full of swagger, the goal, the type of goal, because I follow her career and thing. I just love the way oh, she speak and, you know, she can do a lot of things outside of football. And it's just amazing, you know. I would love to see she get more game time, but... Such as life. But my neither player is the goalkeeper. Cause I am a goalkeeper. Massively. I think she could play in this modern in a male team. Yes. Easily. Yes, easily. Start the Jamaica National. Seen um the senior team. The way she discipline, the way she control, the way she pass, 
tell me a little bit about she because it's just amazing to see you know i've been watching bunny career mm. right you from she at that youth level when jamaica play under 15 under 17 under 20 but i am telling you and i am a late bloomer when it mm. comes to female football on the world stage but i think the best goalkeeper me ever see is the jamaican goalkeeper um what's she name rebecca I just, she just, normally when they kick the ball a little bit over and a goalkeeper, I pass them. But I realize that most goalkeeper in the World Cup just improve. This no longer kick where you kick from far out, where females cannot jump. Yeah. They stop in the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's one of my need a player on the team because of them. But, um, so what are you doing right now to get back into this regular girls team? You're being a part of the World Cup qualifier in Mexico. I saw a picture just I saw a picture on the Instagram and that picture just blew me away. I, I hope I can find it. The, 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 and it's very important to know that you're not playing and the feeling that you have when the team win and the joy I say, Whoa, this is what you need. A lot of people don't understand, you know, playing sports, you know. It's not all of us going to start. I'm mad when I'm not starting. But for you to have that joy, not playing, and the team won, I think the team qualified for the World Cup. And I saw a flag where it was just amazing. Yes. But I'm going to find a picture and show you because I was looking at the Instagram. I was looking at the Instagram and I saw the picture. I said, yo, that picture look amazing. I think you need to frame this picture. Where it is. Uh, I want to take me through that moment. Yeah, man. I think I did Azteca when we qualify for the World Cup. This picture. Yeah, I was trying to hold back tears. <laughs> I was trying to hold back tears in that moment. And I think it's mainly because people don't know half the journey that it took to even get there. Yeah. Um, even if, like I said, like I don't play for myself. So if I'm called upon and they need me to play, I'm ready. Always. I'm always ready. But if I'm not called upon, like you have other duties, you have to be supported. Yeah. Imagine your teammates are on the field and they look at my face and I'm vexed because I'm not there. That's just bad vibes, bad energy. You don't need that. So I always want to make sure that everyone's doing well. Even after that game, the game before that, I think, yeah, Becky even asked me for advice. And I was confused. I'm like, I look up to you so much. I learned so much from you in training. I'm always paying attention to what you're doing because I'm trying to catch up vibe, see if I can, you rub off a little a bit of your talent on me so I could like get better. But she asked me for advice. Um, she's like, did I do this well? How could I have saved this ball? How could I have done this? And like that just shows the respect and the camaraderie that we have for each other. Even though I'm a lot younger than her, I have a lot less experience than her. She respects me enough where she can turn to me and ask me for advice when she's on the field. So of course it's easy for me to be happy for the girls that are playing because there's camaraderie between us. Either way, like at the end of the day, we're not playing for ourselves, we're playing for Jamaica. So if you're on the field, you're playing for Jamaica, then I'm happy. If I see someone on the field and like they're selfish, they're playing for themselves, they don't care about Jamaica, then it's gonna bun me a little bit. I'm not gonna be happy about it. But when I see the passion and the drive and how proud people are to play, easy. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. Well, honestly, when you just say me blow my mind away, I'm not going to tell you why. I am this type of player that I believe that me must play every game. Nobody no better than me. And me I tell you the truth, come up on the podcast, we don't tell lie around here. You see, when me I play and a goalkeeper start over me, my back for the whole day, man. I'm not chat to all the goalkeeper, man. Uh, and since me, I do interview and I get to understand I talk about team chemistry. You know, if you're not starting, you're going to need that support. Mm -hmm. You understand? But I am so caught up in myself that I'm better than everybody. When I sit down on bench, I take off all my boots and all my socks. Mad. I don't want you to see me. That's all me that stay in the back. So when you attack them things, I say, wow. Because me that good. I don't want to sit on the bench. I can't count how much time I sit on the bench. If I know my bench, I don't turn up. I know what it's like to be left bench, right bench, starting player, water girl. Like, I know what it's like to be everything. 
So I want, like, when I'm starting, I know what it's like to have a goalkeeper that doesn't like me and they're just bad vibes. And it doesn't feel good. So yeah. because I know what it's like to start every game and what it's like for my team to depend on me, yeah. I also know what it's like to be on the bench. So yeah. that diversity is why it's easy for me to support the players when I'm not playing. Because yeah. when I do play, you are not happy for me. So it's a give and a take. Like you, you can't have, you can't be bad mind like that. Take off your socks and thing like that. That's not, that's not cool. <laughs> Honestly, because me, 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 me think nobody better than me still. That's mm -hmm. that's who I am, and that's when me I play. You understand? Me know me not start, me not come. You understand? Mm -hmm. But as we go along, I will interview and learn about team chemistry togetherness mm, one of the things that i scared about yeah you say what a girl mad man going to high school and ask ask blackwood about that our coach if you sit on the bench i bring the ball and the water and the girls them are pressure in high school what a boy you know good no i can't I have too much pride mm. you know say me i bring the ball and me i bring the water and the cone no me i walk in my my boots eh? Your ego will kill you <laughs> for me like i'm just my focus like my only this is the thing my only competition is myself so it doesn't yeah. matter who comes in i'm only competing against myself and if there's other players around me that are better than me then i'm going to learn from them so i could still compete against myself so even when i came in and i met becky for the first time and i'm like holy this girl is so good yeah. she's probably played more games in like three seasons than i played in my entire life Mm. But I wasn't like I didn't. I wasn't feeling insecure about it. I was like, this is an opportunity for me to learn and for me to grow and for me to, you know, get a lesson. So that mm. the next time I come into camp, I'm better. And the next time I come into camp, I'm gonna compete again against myself. That's how I think about it. Yeah, you know, you just show me how to be humble, mm. humble as a player. And if any girls watching, because I realize me I get a whole heap woman who watch the show now. If any girls is watching or any young man is watching right now. One of the most things you can do in sports, you have to humble. You understand? You're getting success, you have to be humble because, you know, me, you just hype and all of them things. Me, you just hype. Yo, I don't know. I probably that's why I never reach nowhere still because my ego is too much. You know what I mean? And it gets the better of me. But anyway, I'm not talking about the interview because your interview. So right now, you're saying you're looking something to go in Europe. I mean, I told my agent I'm open to anything. That it's very hard for a goalkeeper to get a club. So if you look at my career, it hasn't been straight. It hasn't been easy. I've done odd jobs. Um, so right now, like I don't want to say too much, but you know, we have a couple conversations on the rise in different countries. And I don't want to say the country because, like, it's, it's okay. All right. Fair <laughs> enough, but, but you know, we're trying. Okay, but fair enough. But are you you tell me that you work part time. You work and then you do football. Oh, you manage that because you know I look at you that play. Ah, yes, they win a Jamaica. I make cement three o'clock and by six o'clock. How do you manage that? The ethic on your body, not focus just on football. After how do you manage that and how do you overcome that? I mean, right now I'm working full time, and then after in the evenings I drive an hour to go to training, train at night, drive another hour back home, and. I just think it's because I love it. Um, mm. I know that nothing worth having comes easy. So if it was easy, everybody would do it. And I know it's not easy. But I look forward at the end of the day when I get to go to training. It's the best part of my day. So even if I'm tired throughout the entire day, I'm tired after work and I take my 30-minute nap and I try and eat something, you know, I know that once I'm on the field, I'm so happy and nothing matters. So, mm. like, I could be exhausted and I can't go out on the weekends, whatever. But in that mm. moment when I'm training, it's the best feeling in the world. So I wouldn't trade it for anything. So it's not, it doesn't even really feel like a sacrifice. The only time it feels like a sacrifice is like if some of my friends are like, oh, like, let's plan a trip in a month. I'm like, I don't know what country I'm going to be in in a month. So that's the only thing that I think feels like a little bit of a sacrifice because I can never plan ahead long term. But mm. again, like we have a small window, especially as female athletes, a small window where I could play football. So I'm not going to let anything get in the way of that. Once I'm done and my knees give out and my back is mush up, okay, you know, then I can stop and I can enjoy my life, whatever. But there's a small window and I want to capitalize on this window and this opportunity. 
you know, one of the things that I want to speak to you about, I know you haven't faced this yet, or you probably, but one of the things that when I was playing, right, and I stopped playing, right, I feel some some ridiculous pain. I don't know if you ever feel that when you know, play for a look a while and then to go back in chaining and to all of these dive and all of them things there. How do you overcome that? Yeah, I my coach knows this as well about me. I can't go too long without training because it feels like I'm starting from scratch when scratch. I go back in. So I never fully, fully take a break. Um, it, it has its pros and cons. And like that's why I got injured last year because I didn't rest at all. And then I ended up hurting myself. So you just have to understand that balance. Never just fully stop. Like I'll be in the gym. I'll be doing other things. My upkeep, my running, my sprints. Um, goalkeeper fitness is definitely extremely different. But different from Break and just sit down and do nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So even in our off season, like I'm still training. I still have my trainer, Dynasty Dane. Like I still do what I need to do. And then when I'm ready to go back onto the field, it's not like I'm starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that, me stop playing for a long time and me go play so I go pick up game in a Toronto and they must say, yo, brother, you know long want a keeper. I was me never know say me have me still have that sharpness. When me tell you say yo me sharp, cause me, me still work out and this is why you're speaking about oh goalkeeper, it's different. Mm -hmm. I still work out and I go to the gym and run and all of them stuff the but I didn't dive or do all none of them stuff. So so our body kind of totally different but Nothing fine, play picking up ball out of the pigeon, do so crazy thing, die. But you see, the nether day, my goodness, man. And I yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah so, <laughs> me knee my back, the pain, me I said, No, sir, I'm gonna go back again. I'll do it, I look a pickup game. It's just, me just get over that. That pain is just, it's never a good feeling to, you know, feel them type of pain and things. So, I know. Probably when you retire, I don't know where you're going to go into. You just say you're going to go. I don't know if you want to chain goalkeeper and all of them stuff. It's too late. You, 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 you don't want to put back your body through that. No, I don't want to retire. It's too late for me to switch positions. Um, but I but think I mean, at this level... Like, I mean, like, you know, you have a goalkeeper, like you have a goalkeeper, cling it or a goalkeeper, school where, you know, you're teaching the young goalkeeper, you, you know, you have to... You retire, you have to go back, go dive and all of them things to show them. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think it'd bother me. Like, there's levels of pain, and I think this is just, like, athletes. I like it because I know, like, it's making me better. Even when I'm in the gym, my muscles are sore. It means my muscles are growing. So I just think about it like that. Um, sometimes in the moment, like, especially when we're doing fitness, I'm like, I want to cry. I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? But then, you know, pain is temporary. So when it's done, it's done. And then you feel right. good after. You're like, okay. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> but how do you do it though? Because you live in Toronto, you know, winter. How do you chain? You, you, you don't have the outdoor to do a whole heap of diet. But how do you chain in, 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 in winter? I know you go to the gym and stuff, but activity by diving and all of them stuff there. How do you manage to do that? Yeah, with my club, we'll have our winter program, and it'll be indoor. The only thing I don't like about it is that turf is really hard on your body, and mm. it's always on turf. So we'll have a dome. We're inside the dome. It's cold, but you're there. You're training on the turf. You still do everything that you would do outside. It's just covered mm. by a dome. So we can still train full-time in Toronto. Mm. We're in our off-season right now. September comes back. We're going to be in our winter program. You do You play against other teams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I just don't like turf personally because it also rips up our skin as goalkeepers. So I'm always in like long sleeve, long pants throughout the entire season. Um, but it's no different than anywhere else. Wait, wait, what, what do you prefer though? I like short sleeve. I think long sleeve make me look. Me, 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 I take back that. I like short, short sleeve, mm -hmm. match, but chaining, play long pants. That's how you do it? Yeah, in training, I like to wear a long sleeve and shorts. And then in games, only in Canada because of the turf, I wear a short sleeve and pants because the turf will rip up your skin. If it's summertime, we're on grass, short yeah. sleeves, shorts, fine. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. How, how do you go about getting yourself ready? Talk me to a, a match day, getting yourself ready as a female. 
um, music is a huge, huge part of my life. So a lot of people joke with me about this. They're like, are your headphones ever not in? And I'm like, yeah, I listen to music 24 seven. So before a game starts, I have my playlist. I like to pray in the car before I get out of the car to go into the team room. When I get into the team room, I say hi to my teammates, listen to my music. I have to take a walk. I like to go to the field, walk around the field, just, you know, scope it out, see the vibes. And I go back inside. I like to get dressed. I don't talk much to anybody. This is like when I'm starting. Um, I don't like to speak to people until like we get into the training because I don't want to be distracted. I, I'll literally get onto the field, into the training, and my headphones are still in and we're warming up. Once it's time for me to handle the ball, I'll take my music out. Um, but that's basically my process. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But next thing more, I'll ask you. Who are the goalkeeper you either like? Both on the men's side or the women's side? From both. Um, Blake is like a huge inspiration to me. <laughs> He's amazing. Andre Blake. And then obviously Becky. And then the older goalkeeper from before, Nicole McClure. She was just, to me, she's a legend. So those are the three goalkeepers within the Jamaican national team that I definitely look up to. Okay, surprise. You give me Andre Blade, though. I know him achievements, how great you are, but I was surprised you said Andre Blade. Why? I don't know. I, I was surprised. He's a legend. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I, I'm not doubting that. I'm not doubting that. I know he's a legend, but, you know, meaning, like, to see you look up to another national goalkeeper that playing at that level, mm -hmm. you know, I was surprised because, you know, asking another goalkeeper I interview, I never hear their call and Jay Blake name. Mm. I think yeah. it's because um, Spider was his coach growing up, and that was the coach that coached me growing up. So I'm like, if Spider can help him with this, Spider can do that for me as well. <clears throat> also, like, I didn't have technical, technical training. So to see, like, a raw goalkeeper just come up and play with, like, the same, basically the style of play like me, is amazing. It's 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 inspiring because there's some people like they they had coaching in academies from when they're five years old and they have all of the accolades and all the resources in the world. But cool, good for you. But like I like seeing Blake because I see like where he started from and how he's journey from where he is now. That's inspiring to me because that's like me as well. Well, look like you know, say you're part of me, you know, you're part of the family, you know, and. Blake come to Spider, me come to Spider, you come to Spider. Me not really like Spider still, you know. Spider, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. He's just such somebody that perfect. He just want everything perfect. And I don't know, it's like, I don't know. Other person, I like him, but him chaining. It's not bad, you know, but I don't know, man. I just want to get calling for the national program, as me say, at my club, at my school. I think me are the best. Mm. So going to Spider, my belief is I know everything. And me and him are always a toss up and thing. And I say, young man, this is how it's supposed to do. If you come to the national program, this is how it go and all of this stuff. But he's a good coach. Mm. He's a very good coach. And most of our best goalkeeper them, whether it's on the female side or the man's side, come to Spider. I mean, I think that's good because I'm the type of player where I'm, I'm like, I get in my head a lot. So if I feel like I'm not good enough or something's off, I'm like, ah, and then I get distracted. So the spider, because he's such a perfectionist, it gives me something to focus on. So even if I do something wrong and I'm like, oh, like spider, I thought that was good. And he's saying, no, it wasn't good. I'm not going to challenge that because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like if I do everything right and he's telling me that it's wrong, either way, I'm going to get better. So I could walk away and throw up my hands and be like, oh, well, I thought that was great. I made a great save, whatever. But if Spider comes back and tells me that it was bad, I'm going to do it again and again and again and again. So at the end of the day, I'm still going to get better. Mm. But, I don't mind. How do you feel when a coach tell you that? Um, <clears throat> it's not good enough. You need to work more odd because my allies are well soft spot for females you know? i don't want to hurt them i argue i'm overprotective and you have to know what to say to our females but you know i would love to hear from a female perspective when i could say hey you're not good enough you're not up to the standard you didn't play well today is it knock your or you just say 
um this is professionally the coach are telling me me have a lot of work to do how do you manage that it used to affect me badly i used to cry a lot i used to be really emotional really sensitive and i would just get yeah. down on myself yeah before i used to be very 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 sensitive and i would just think like oh i'm not good enough to be here i don't deserve to be here and it would mess up the next training day and the next training day now i take it with a grain of salt i just take it for what it is if you said i'm not good enough tell me why if you're saying it's your technical ability if you're saying it's this your feet whatever it is then i just analyze that i'm not going to let emotions get into it and i'm going to work hard for that what i've been struggling with <clears throat> a little bit is that sometimes you know you are good enough you've done everything that you can within your power and like you still won't be selected that's one thing that i'm still trying to understand you know just still having that motivation even when you've done everything that's asked of you um but either way, like if a coach tells you you're not good enough and you truly believe in your talent and you truly love the sport, you're going to use that as motivation. I see it as cool. Now I'm going to get better. You told me I'm not good enough. I'm not I'm not going to say like, oh, I'm going to prove you wrong, but I'm just going to see what you're telling me to do better and I'm going to do it better. Wow. This is why I'm going to ask you a question because I know females you know even even when me commenting on all of them i'm very be careful what um the words and all of them stuff that if i play i don't play too well you know i am not going to go over the top i very cautious because i know what it can do to our females because females are a little bit more sensitive yeah. it just depends on what you say it's not, a, yeah, it's, it's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. So a coach can be like, yes, that was absolutely terrible. What is that supposed to do for me? I'd rather you say, yes, that was absolutely terrible. Here's the steps to work through to get better. I will not be offended by that. But if you're just going to be a bad mind and tell me that I suck and then walk away, what is that supposed to do for a player? I'd rather you just teach me, okay, well, how am I going to get better? Because that's always been my question. When I'm told I'm not good enough, how can I get better? And that's always been my response to everything. Mm. My made a, my, you know, make a mistake. And I want you to help me because I am big on female football now, right? I want you to help me. I want you to guide me, right? And I'm searching for the answer. When I saw females, I need to get in a problem for this. When I said, oh, this player kind of little look, not look up. I tell you exactly what I'm saying. Cause I don't want to fix up nothing. Mm. I say, yo, bro, she not work hard, bro. She look overweight, bro. That's not how she look. How do you take offense to something like that? I said. So even growing up within the national program, I was overweight for a lot of my time there. But the thing is, instead of asking me why I'm overweight or how to help me not be overweight, the comments were just nasty, just terrible, not nice at all. And it's not helpful. It never helped me. It made me gain even more weight because I didn't know what to do. But if it's not affecting how you're playing, you can't really say anything. I know as an athlete, you're supposed to have a certain physique. But then again, like people are built differently. I'm never going to be MAGA. That's for one. But I know that now I'm fit. I'm within the framework that I'm supposed to be. And I got here on my own and with obviously with Dane, my trainer, but certain comments, they just, they just don't help. They don't make sense. If you're going to point to the player and be like, oh, she's big, but she just busts net. Why are you saying anything? You know, it just depends on how you say it. When we get to a certain level, I do understand that you have to have a certain physique in order to perform. But if, if you have a player, let's just say she's 200 pounds, but she's passed every fitness test, she's busting net. She's working hard. There's no issue other than she just looks different. She's a little bit bigger. What's the issue? I have a huge problem with that. And I feel like with a lot of male coaches, they look at females' bodies and they feel the need to comment on it. There's a way in which to go about things that's professional. Because the way I've been spoken to about my body has definitely been unprofessional. And then when I got fit and now you see me posing, whatever, they can't say anything to me. But, like, I don't take it as a compliment when you're telling me that I look good now because, like, when I was still do, I, nothing's changed. I just look different. I'm still performing. But at the end of the day, like, the comments from before, I'm never going to forget that. They were nasty. So even... You're never going to forget it. Huh? You're, never go you're not going to forget. You're not going to forget it. 
Never, because it's bad mind. I'm a 14 year old <laughs> girl. I'm going through puberty. Of course, my body is changing. I'm trying to figure out what am I supposed to eat? What am I not supposed to be eating? And the thing is also people don't know why people gain weight. When I was overweight, it wasn't because I was overeating. I was starving myself. And that's why I was gaining weight because I'd try and go into a camp and like lose weight before the camp. So I wouldn't eat. Your body's going to hold on to the fat. I didn't know. But then I get into camp like, oh, you're eating too much, you're eating too much. And like, that was not the issue. So that's what I'm talking about professionalism. We need people that actually know what they're speaking about before they come mm. back to me. Mm. So that was always my issue, like growing up where it's like, you're just looking at someone's body. You don't know what's going on. You don't know the story. You don't know how their body works. I started losing weight when I started eating more. So it just all depends on the player. Listen, me I tell you, you know, yeah, teach me, you know, me know some of them things, yeah, but um, just for hear it from a female perspective, because I am doing a lot of video and the regular girls and i am here to learn and i want to learn i am a student of the game mm -hmm. and what i realize with females easy to put on weight than men right females out of season if they don't easy easy easily females easy is that right Carrie? Yeah. of course yeah i can eat bread and blow up but then also, like, I can work out consistently and lose the weight. So it just depends on the player. I just think, like, we need to be more professional with how we speak to people. And, you know, everyone's body is different. Like I said, when I started eating more, I started losing weight. When I stopped mm. starving myself, when I was starving myself, I was gaining weight. And it wasn't helpful to get the comments on top of that. And mm. then now I'm fit and, like, no one's going to say anything. So I just think, like, even I know other players that are overweight and it really affects their training. They're not comfortable in their clothes. They're not comfortable and they're not performing anymore. Instead of just sitting aside, having a professional conversation. Hey, do you need a dietitian? Do you need help? Instead of just, oh, she's big. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, so um, how often you skip? Every day. Every day. I think it's great for goalkeeping. And <laughs> I, it's like a new found love for me. I don't know. I don't, I just feel like I get in my zone. I'm listening to my music. Especially when I skip on beat, because I'm like, if I was on roads and I was at carnival right now, would you stop dancing? No. So then I'm not going to stop skipping. That's how I feel when I listen to music. So skipping is like every single day for me. All right. How often do you use bombing bar in training? Um, not too often. When I'm trying to do like my, my Russian twists and my throws, like I'll do them, but not too often. I know it's good for training, but like the... The half ball, not the heavy one. I'll do that in my my sessions, my training sessions. Yeah, more, but I love fear involve a little bit more bombing ball in a session and thing. Even with the big ball and stuff. Mm -hmm. So each time the big ball come, you get the small ball. So you yeah. kind of get a little bit feel of the two ball, yeah. and it kind of make your eye open more, you know. But skipping, the reason why I'm asking for that, skipping is great, man. Like. I know that since going high school, reflection, spring, all of them things that is just make you skipping every day, it make it come like um uh, what I call it. You just have a spring in your foot where you just get in there, you just get in there and things. So that is good. But what you really love about um football that keep you going is not something that gives you a lot of money. What keep you going in the football? I mean, it's just the feeling that I get while I'm playing and just also the camaraderie with my teammates. Like, if you know my story with, with the reggae girls, it's not always been positive. Um, I've got, definitely gone through a lot of adversity, but because I love my teammates so much and I love the feeling that I get when I'm on the field, it doesn't really matter. So even though I know I'm like, I'm about to go overseas and get less money playing football than I'm gonna get for my current job, I love football. And I only have a small window to play. And I don't want to have any regret in my life. So mm -hmm. if I have to go and struggle for a couple of years in my 20s, I'm willing to go and struggle in my 20s. Because I don't want to be 30 and 40 looking back and saying, oh, I wish I tried to see my... Make that sacrifice. Exactly. I don't want to have any regret. So even though sometimes it definitely sucks, like I lived in New Zealand. And I was sleeping on the floor on a mattress. Who wants to do that? I had just graduated from school. I could have gone and got a proper job. In Paris, I wasn't even getting paid, and it was a struggle. 
but you know you get stories from it me and Den are together are making rice and we're like trying to save money and i'm here i'm like i'm not even getting paid when when that when you playing for your club team or your national team the club team when i was with Den um last year in paris when we were together i wasn't getting paid oh really mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> But then again, it was to me, it was worth it because I got the experience. I, I speak French. I've always wanted to play in Paris. And I got an opportunity and I seized it. So, yes, I got injured. But at the end of the day, like, it was an opportunity. I know, like, men would never have to go through that. But what can we do as female athletes? You know, you have to just take what you can get. And I just took it as an opportunity, as an experience. And I always try to think positive. So the positive thing is that I learned how to budget properly. I learned how to make pumpkin rice and you know, buy cheaper foods so we can survive. I don't even know. But mm. as a female athlete, you play because you love it, not for the money. Like, mm. for men, so, they have the opportunity to play for the money. We don't. Like, this is why I'm a fight with the administration. Say, so look at the girl, the money, you know, nobody ramp the girls, the money, and you know, yo, I'm going to bad food in you know, a because I know the sacrifice that you guys making, and especially when you have an education, when you can Love football. Most of the girls them have the medication where they can say, yo, leave that. We can go get with our education, we can get good job, good house, good things. But for see you guys making that sacrifice, it just make me want to even go more on the administration. The more me interview when I'm here, um, I think a weeks, two weeks ago I have um Mala and she telling me about she's pay and late all of them stuff there and all of them stuff there. I think you guys play in Paris when they get in good money. No. Even the paid players that are getting paid weren't getting good money. <laughs> I'm always no matter what, I'm always getting less than what I could get with my degree. Hundred percent. Wow. And yet that committed. Yeah, because we only have a small window. So if I have to sacrifice this time now, then okay. I mean, you know, I, I have the experience that some people will never, ever get. Like, how many people can say they went to a World Cup? Like, mm -hmm. that's something that no one can ever take away from me. But it is hard sometimes. Sometimes I'm, like, struggling, and I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? I don't like being poor. Like, why am I in debt? If anything, football has put me into debt, and it doesn't feel good. But at the end of the day, like, it's a small window of my life, a small chapter of my life, and I'm going to seize this opportunity, and then... You know, so it's a football put at you dead. Of course. Of course. <laughs> My mom's in the chat. She could tell you. <laughs> Where is your mom? Gail Which one? Swan. I see her there. Which one? Gail. Gail, Gail. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, good evening. I hope you have a wonderful time and stuff. So it's a football put in debt. Of course. You don't know what I'm with me in the administration. Me and another bitch. I them thing I them thing I make me, me cut up. For you hear that football put on in a day and thing. But talk to me about your experience playing in that 2019, a part of that 2019 World Cup. How do you, you know, my biggest thing I want to play now, when I didn't went to that under 17 World Cup, mm -hmm. and even now the people that went in the administration, I cussed them out because of them corruption and them bias in my backs. Mm. And that take away from me not representing for Jamaica in that under 17, 2011. Yeah. How do you feel? Because that is the biggest goal of a football player or a female player. In 2019, I don't think I even dreamt about going to the World Cup because it didn't feel tangible. Um, we came from literally nothing. Like most of us were still in university. I was in university. I just turned 21. I was like, ah, big woman, I'm an adult now. And when I got to the World Cup, I don't think it hit me until later that we just did that. We were there. Even when I made the team, I remember when Coach Busby told me that I made the squad and I was crying. I was like, I couldn't even believe it. I was just happy to be at the camp. But I worked hard. I put in the work. I hopped on a plane. I went to New Zealand. I did my first professional contract. And I worked really, really hard to get there. Um, but then again, I don't think it really sunk in until later because when we were in it, we were like, okay, we're focused on our training. We're focused on the football. We're focused on everything around that it wasn't until after we left the world cup that i realized that we were at the world cup <laughs> wow oh
just feel emotional because you know I have a little daughter and you know that's why I'm here to fight in for better for the sports because we really can do better for female football and you know just listen to you and more I interview you guys I can get the understanding of you guys because one of the things that make a lot of people do understand you guys you guys kind of a little bit far away from the peepers i think the girls need to get a little bit more close mm -hmm. to jamaican people i think the distance not hearing from you guys to understand so sometimes when the jf said this and them said that is like jf very very manipulate manipulate the people them sometimes against the girls them and because we never hear what the females going through. We always hear about the men's side. Mm. But on the female side, not much information. Not saying girls won't leave. In, no, no, I'm saying like doing interviews, sharing a story. The people can have an understanding where you guys go to. So when you guys come to the national team and want that, mm. this is what needs to be done. This is what we need to get pay on time. If you guys pay for your bag, you guys get back on the money. All of them stuff that is very important. And for you guys to open up to the people, the people sucking up all of these and to get the understanding of you guys. I just feel like, and I, I completely understand both sides in terms of we could speak up a lot more, but we also don't want to overshadow our success with the negativity. Like sometimes we'll do something amazing. We just beat a team. We just made history. But there's so many bad things that were going on behind the scenes that nobody knows about. But we don't want to just like overshadow the positive with the negative. So even going to the 2019 World Cup, there's so many things that had happened that nobody has will know about unless you were part of it. But then again, like Jamaica has made history. We want people to be happy. And if we have to do the groundwork and we have to make the sacrifice, then okay. You know, things will get better. What is in darkness will always come into light. That's how I see it. Um, but a lot of the time I do know that like we do hold our tongue with a lot of things because we don't want to just be shedding light on all the negativity. We also don't want to scare away younger girls from wanting to play football because if they knew the sacrifices and the things that happen behind the scene, they probably wouldn't want to play. It doesn't seem worth it. So I feel like you still have to go through that process to understand, you know, then you get the love for the sport, but a lot of the things that we go through, we don't bring to light because it'll either be manipulated and turned around or now we're overshadowing the success and the positivity. Mm. When, um, just let me try to get a little bit of correction. Power with me, I try to say that. Now, see, I miss when him there. Probably me didn't explain it. What I mean by, I don't want you guys to, I want you guys to focus on football. Mm. The only thing I want you guys to focus on football. I, I don't like players come out and, you know, speak about, Things what they're not supposed and to get cause one of the things that I very aware of. I don't want to get anybody in trouble mm -hmm. because I know the type of people who I am dealing with. Me, them the like me for money. <laughs> That's why me try not to ask you guys anything to get you guys in trouble. I know they like the blacklist people. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you guys to come out and speak. Because I know one thing they're going to have in my Oh, we're going to get rid of them. But oh, get rid of the whole team. Because I know one, uh, this is not going to be the man side where, oh, you're going to get rid of this girl, that girl, and think he's going to be up. No, everybody not going to play. So it's more harder on phone side. I don't want you guys to come out and speak. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to share your own story. Yeah. What happened with your club? All of them. It's not tough to be at the I hate talk about having an interview where you guys talking about the administration me do me do the talking me getting a trouble for uno me will be the one who will get the sacrifice uno just stick to football and thing but you know doing more interview like sharing a story not about the bad light but people get to understand because me always you know i support liverpool i don't like joel mati but just hear him speak me i say whoa and hear him story he may, no, why well, don't like this? Guy. I have to be a fan of this guy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm coming from that. The the, the the more people can get more close and hear when you out and, and get that love for this world. So that's exactly what I mean. Not every time I come out and I beat. No, no. Me will do the talking. Me will yeah. get in trouble. Me will be the one who has sacrificed for owner. Yeah. 
I just, yeah, even in general as a female athlete, it is disappointing. Um, I try not to focus on it because I see like million dollar deals for the men. And then that same league, like they're giving maybe 20K to a woman, which is like, I could work at McDonald's full time, make more money than playing as a professional soccer player, which is sad. And it's true though. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like we're here because we love it and we're here because we can see the potential. And, you know, if we have to make the sacrifice for the future generation of female athletes, then we'll make the sacrifice. That's how I see it. Yeah. You can look back and say, hey, what we fight for, I feel no better. And this is the thing I want younger players, females to understand. We have to respect who they, who they who come before now and set it and fight it. Because I have many times when you guys make uh, whosoever make the sacrifice, they don't get no love. Mm -hmm. The new generation come and just, oh, we're getting this big bag of money now. They just started disrespecting everybody. Understand that someone made the sacrifice for Huna to be better. Always. That's why I always big up Nicole. Because she came way before me. She's been here from probably 2006, 2008 times. I always have to big her up because if she didn't do what she did as a goalkeeper those yeah. times, I wouldn't be here. And the mm. next generation wouldn't be here. So we always have to look back at the players, especially the reggae girls that came before us and just big them up because they have laid the groundwork for us so that we can lay the groundwork for the next generation. Fair enough, fair enough. But um, so I don't want to keep you any longer, but I want to ask you this is very important. How big you are and your diet. When you you leave work, you, you know, you do work, then you have the chaining. You travel one hour to go, one hour to come back. That's two hour plus you work eight hour plus you do three hour up on the football pitch. Then you get back home. How do you manage that and prepare a proper meal? I am a personal trainer too, just so you know. Mm -hmm. And people ask me, oh me, I have everything on time. Why am I not put on weight and live in Canada? How do you manage, you know, work? preparing your food, get back home, get enough for us to go again. So you have to be smart. I, I will be honest. I'm not going to lie. Like sometimes I'll just, I'm like, I have nothing to eat and I'll have sleep for dinner, which is terrible. But sometimes I'm just so tired. I'm like, I can't cook. I can't do it. I'm just going to pray and I'm going to sleep and I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to try again. But most of the time I'm going to meal prep on my Sundays. I do my cooking for the week and then if my grandma has time, like she might also cook for me, but I make sure it's balanced. I have my meat, I have my vegetables, I have my, my carbs, and mm -hmm. I separate it out like that through the week. I have a calendar that I keep on my fridge so I know what days I'm supposed to be meal prepping. And then I also have been trying to get sponsorships by from meal prepping companies like Good Food or Chef's Plate, and I'll like do different recipes and I'll do that as well, I'll do my cooking. Um, but for me, like, and people think this is crazy, but I just think it's an athlete thing. Like I will cook and freeze the food and i'll just eat the same thing every day for like three weeks like no recipe change and nothing but i just think it's the athlete in me like i think of food as fuel i'm not necessarily like a foodie i don't like restaurants and stuff. i'm not really into that but food is fuel for me so if i need to eat like to fuel my body as an athlete then that's what i need to do so meal mm -hmm. prepping is definitely key for me and balance don't isolate yourself from sweets and be like, I'm not having candy, I'm not having cake. You have to have balance because then your body's going to go crazy and then you're going to go weeks without having candy or whatever, then you're going to go crazy and eat everything at once. So I don't ever restrict myself from anything. You have to have a balance. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Me, my 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 thing, me prepare my food for the week too and also I stop eat from 2 o'clock. My lunchtime is 2 my eating, I eat a solid breakfast, a 15 minute break, you know, have a sandwich, and then eat my lunch, I stop eating. So I don't consume after cheap. I really eat, I really blend up stuff in the night and drink because, yeah, that's what I did because I want to stay lean. I don't want to have no fat for my belly or anything. My very, my, my, my very, um, you know, it's hard for lose fat. It's hard for lose the weight and stuff. And I mean, I know, but I just want to keep that fat away from me. So I don't eat late. I don't really eat out and all of them stuff there. So I make sure that I know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. 
I know what I'm going to eat Monday. I know what I'm going to eat Tuesday. You understand? So that's the discipline. So I like the way you have that discipline. Sometimes it's going to be enough. Sometimes, you know, every now and then, you know, you, you're tired of the food that oh, you want to try something. But I realized that I saw you on Instagram. Will you go into modeling? I have I have a modeling agency. So I'm signed to Ledru Models. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that fit it. I don't really like it per se. Why? There's not enough diversity in the industry. I've had a lot of issues when it comes to like, for example, my hair texture. Like they're they're expecting me to like, they think I'm biracial, so they expect me to have a certain hair texture. But then I take out my braids and I have an afro and they're like, oh. Or even just body composition. Like I'm an athlete, I have a solid build, I'm tall. Okay. So you're not gonna, I'm not gonna be MAGA. You're not gonna have me walking and my thighs are gonna touch, obviously. I'm gonna have muscles. <laughs> So there's just certain things that I'm like, I'm not really too interested in when it comes to the, the modeling industry, but I'm also always open to breaking barriers. So I'll stay in it just to challenge the barriers, to break the stigmas. That's why I'm probably right. still in it. Okay. But, but, it's not most but you know, you have different type of modeling though. A hundred percent. But then yeah. again, like I've never been like, I can't be a sports model because I'm not ripped, but then I can't be a runway model because I'm not MAGA. So there's like a, I'm, I do commercial modeling. So it, oh. it all depends. Like, you can't really put me in one box. That's been my issue with my modeling career. I don't fit yeah. into one section. Yeah. You want to be round. Me, me not like when nobody box me. So, I like that. And me, when I do Jamaica, I have to get close for that. Me, like, that modeling that me prefer like. But for go up on the runway, no, 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 no. Yeah, I prefer put on the clothes and, and thing. And the reason why I say that, because I say you have some nice picture with your yeah, branding clothes and every day, the prep meal and all of them stuff there. Outstanding. Thank you. Outstanding. But what you think going forward, we have the women's team going to play in Jamaica mm -hmm. and they're going to play in Canada. Which anyway in Canada I go may I go play, may I go watch a game there and thing. So what are you doing now to get into that um what's it name? Olympic qualifier coming up against Canada. Playing against the hometown team. You know, it would be nice for you to be a part of the team. But what you're doing right now to have that mindset, if the coach ready, call you, you have that mindset to going into the, to the Olympic qualify. Like I said, I've always had the mentality of stay ready. You never know what could happen. Even at the World Cup, like, you never know. Someone could get injured, God forbid, like, knock on wood. But if I was, like, sitting on the couch doing nothing and I got called in, I wouldn't be ready. So I'm always training. I always stick to the routine that I've had with the mentality of, I could be called into camp tomorrow. I can be called into a club tomorrow. So either way, I'm ready. If I'm called on, I'm called on. If I'm not, I'm not. The difference is in terms of my mentality, it's not going to break me like before if I'm not called into camp. I'm not going to go and be sad and go into depression and stop training. You know, you just have to train for yourself. And I think that's been where my head is, where I'm not training to be called into camp. I'm not training to be um you know, playing for a club. I'm training for myself. I want to be the best version of myself. I'm only competing against myself. So whatever happens around that happens and I'll be grateful for the opportunity. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's not gonna break me, you know? Like I'm gonna keep going. And good the other doors gonna open, good things are gonna come. But it doesn't come now, it could come next year, it could come the year after, you know? Mm. My advice I want to give you as a former player and a football fans, I just want to let you know it's rough right now, but I always remember why you start, mm -hmm. right? And I love you mentioned it about 500 times on the show, and I don't think you know the word we mentioned 500 times. Can you remember? No. All right. You see that thing the way you say stay ready? You yeah. said it about 500 times. And watching a documentary with LeBron James and him said the difference with him than whole heap of player in steer ready and mess yo that sounds so simple mm -hmm. so when the journalist asks him what do you mean by that mysterious hey if the coach call if the nba if start tomorrow i'm ready mm -hmm. you know why i am always in training i never stop chain i never stop chain he said you don't go out him say yes but just to let you know my family are good, they have to chain with me. Yeah. Vice versa. You have to chain with me, 
that's the sacrifice I am making. You chained me, and we'll go together. That's and one thing that I respect about my friends. If they if I they ask me to go and I say I have soccer, they're not gonna question it. So like, show me your company and tell you who you are. Also, the people who I surround myself with, mm -hmm. they also support my goals and my aspirations. So it hasn't really felt like I'm missing out on things or mm -hmm. I can't focus because the people around me support me and they have a good head on their shoulders. Um, so yeah, just just also like I used to not be able to train without a goal. Like I'd be getting ready for a camp, so I'd be able to go hard and train. But now because I haven't been called into camp, like there was a period of time where I'm like, why why am I working so hard? What am I even working for? Hmm. But now I'm in that mentality where I'm working, I'm competing against myself. So it's been different. And that's why I've been able to train as hard as I've been training. Because mm -hmm. now I have a different mentality of I'm competing against myself. I want to see my full potential, et cetera, et cetera. But before, I was just training for a camp. And then my I was up and down. I was good. And then I was like out of shape. Then I was up. But now it's like it's been consistently. I'm steadily going up because now I'm only playing against myself. So coach, if you are listening, because I have the coach the interview you know i may have some serious questions to ask the coach so coach make sure you watch this interview she ready and she stay ready she ended up on a different mindset right now but my advisor i was um i was going to say to you that as a goalkeeper you have a long you have a longer career more than the old field player you can play up until you are 40. Mr. goalkeeper play up until they are 40. You never know what can happen. Um, most goalkeeper, they really start to peak at the age of 27, 28. Mm -hmm. They start to peak. You are 25 now. You're probably not hot a club right now, but I don't want you to frustrated. Things will come. Mm -hmm. Opportunity will come. You see, once you're cheating, Father God not sleep. You will make that opportunity to come. But you see, the moment you stop, at the same time, the opportunity to come. So always remember, why you start, Shane? Why you start playing soccer from your eight to now? And where you reach? One goal, one World Cup, the Gold Cup is coming up for the females thing. Don't tell me. I'm searching. I'm doing a lot of research. The Olympic is coming up in Paris. That's where you go and play your club football. You never know what can happen. I want you to continue to chain. You have a long span in the game. If you don't get no major injury, I hope God can protect you. You don't get any injury and stuff. But I want you to continue to work. Stay ready. And sky's the limit. Never doubt yourself. I'm glad how you, know, you go hard on yourself. And then a moment you pick up yourself and stuff. But just keep working. You understand? And work smart. And be disciplined. You understand? Be very disciplined and stuff. Sky is the limit. And I wish you all the best. Really appreciate you take up the opportunity to come and share your story. Um, I see you went to Carnival. I've been watching your status. I see you went to Carnival. Have your fun. You know, hopefully. Balance. I like that balance. So. And I see a prep meal too. Don't think I don't. I just see the Carnival. I see a prep meal. I see. Listen, you think nobody I watch? People I watch. Believe you me. Trust me. And, you know, I am a part of the game now. Sometimes coach call me, yo, Ryan, what do you think about that girl? Where the mindset? Where the man in it? You just did an interview and, you know, me become someone who start to refer. People call me to refer, yo, what a mindset? Oh, she look, she ready? Oh, confident. And it happened, a scout called me from Hallelujah Europe. Wow. With a former Jamaican player. He's still playing. He were playing in US, USL, and the scout called me, and my could be, I was so amazing when the person introduced themselves to me and said, yo, I watched your program, I saw you did an interview, as the person who interviewed him, how do you feel, you think him ready, you think, you know what I mean, I said, yeah, him look ready, him, 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 him a chain and all of them things there, I'm a call him, I mean, I said, yo bro, you know who just called me, and him could believe and told me, hook him up on the phone with the agent and know the agent, get him a club. So I am telling people that you know, because uh, 300 and 900 people are watching now, boys. So in the video upload, mm -hmm. you have more people who watch the when it uploads because this is live now. 
you have less people watch but when they upload you frighten you come back and you see so many people watch it so you never know who are, who are watch you and the discipline you're drinking water right yeah of course all right which is good which is good but i know you have your mom i want to big up your mom for do the great work and stuff big up to all of the people in the comment section you have the last saying we are saying to your mom your players we are saying to the people of jamaica your coach can your coach watch a show too so yeah I mean, just to my mom, she knows this. Like, I'm just so grateful that she has never given up on me, even though it, sometimes the journey for football as a female athlete doesn't necessarily make sense. But she never wavered in faith and also the power of prayer, because I know, like, I wouldn't have made it this far without all the people praying for me. Um, to the reggae girls, you guys know, like, these are my sisters, these are my family. So I'm always supporting them, I'm always happy for them. And to my coach, I mean, hi, I haven't spoken to her in a long time, but <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> But overall, like, I'm just grateful. So also to you, Ryan, thank you for having me. And then everybody that has watched the live, I also really appreciate it. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jamaican people, you don't ramp with me, you know, come out for the game. Yes. Whether you're going to be in Canada, whether you're going to be in Jamaica, people, I am going to give away 15 tickets to go to the regular girls game against Canada. I want the people them to go and support the girl. All of the people them want to jump up and, and all of them thing there. I want to make sure you go and support. And if you are in the diaspora and you cannot make it to the game, why not? Talk to me. PayPal account there. Ryan, I am sending $100. I want to buy some ticket for some people to go and support the girls. It means a lot. You know, we're just coming off a big World Cup, the hype and everything. Let's us try to fill up the stadium and support these girls. We can't beat Canada, you know. 100%. You know, so the other day when we go into the game, we build a video. When we, I think the first game we play, who play the first game? Who play in the World Cup the first game? Brazil or France? France. 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 I think leading up to the Brazil game, after we we play Brazil. And I said to the people them, we make a video and you know, me. Most of people are telling me, say, me, 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 me a madman, I don't know what I talk. I make the video and I say, people don't believe no man. We only need to see if you believe in the girls. Them. I think we, we go two games, one win and one job. And we're playing against the my, mighty Brazil. And I make a video. Jesus Christ. Look on the comment of that video. The man tell me, say, me a madman, I don't know what I say. You see, the girls them, get a result. All me I tell the people them believe. Mm -hmm. And you see what happened? Yep. The game has growing yep. on the female side where nothing is easy. You have to work for everything we want. So I want the people them to come and support the girls them deserve it. If they work up here, yeah, they make a lot of swallow pride and swallow we 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 we, 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 we love female football. They work up here yeah, so much people jump up and down. Let's see. And the people in my baby you now buy the ticket, you know. And when me say meet the person at the gate, them they show up. You know, must stop the that people to come and support the game and you know, use all kind of excuse. Come and support the regular girls. Alright, but anyway, it's a pleasure to have you. Hopefully, in the future, you can come and share another part of the journey. It's a pleasure and I appreciate it. I think you is the Third girl, no, I interview third or fourth. But you're a part of the history, you're a part of the family. Don't be a stranger. Make sure you watch a program, all right? We have some good things. But you probably don't like my style, because I always have beat while the JFF. But anyway, <laughs> pick up yourself still. No fluff, and I appreciate you coming. And big up, is this your friend, um, Edwards? Yes, shout out to Kamiya, one of my best friends. Shout out to oh. Kamiya. Oh. It's a pleasure to have you, okay? Um, you, so, you, you have a very good friend, so you. make sure you tell her, say, Camille, that she must continue to be training. Tell her, say, don't stop. All right? So, like it. I like it. I like it. Big up to all of the people in the comment section. Whenever you're ready, you can leave because I'm going to close it with okay. a bad all right. Oh, well, no, don't leave it. 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 Oh, my God. No, don't leave it. Don't leave it. So, more, you do this for me, all right? 
please, I'm begging you. Last thing is me, I'm begging you. Just a second. So this is what more I do for me. So I am going to tell you what I want you to say and you repeat it for me. I'm going to remove myself from the stream and you're going to, I want you to be a part of my show. All right? Okay. So, ready? Hi, I'm Ryan LFC. You're watching Elite Sports TV to stay up to date. Everything, reggae girls, reggae boys, Jamaican football, subscribe to Ryan LFC and Elite Sports TV. Oh, I miss out something. I miss out something. I miss out something. I miss out something. Hold on. Let me try to get it back. I mean, I remember exactly where I did what. Can you all that? Yeah, it's easy. If Tiffany can do it, you can do it. Let <laughs> me just try to remember. Let me play this for Tiffany. I'm going to make you play it for me. This is coming. I'm going to remember the thing. Okay. Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Don't, no, don't pressure. Don't pressure. Don't pressure. If you make mistake, it's fine. Okay. If you make mistake, all you can do is just start to go back. I'm going to remove myself. Don't be, don't be nervous. Okay. One thing. All right. Yeah, you can whenever because you're going to edit. Whenever you're ready, okay. you can just Ryan LFC. Yeah, Ryan LFC. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Yasmin Jameson, Reggae Girls goalkeeper, and you're watching Ryan LFC's YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Okay. Thank you very much. Ian's your job that now. Cut out that for me, brother. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it and stuff. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. And be good in Toronto, all right? Bye. Bye, yeah. Yes, people. So that's another one. Another one. Another one. Top interview with the reggae girls. People, me excited, all right? Me really, really excited. You get the message? People, stay tuned. Stay tuned because if I tell you the truth, I am going to interview the reggae girls head coach. But it's time stop. Let's see how it go. But you can look out for that one day. Alright? Look out for some more interview with the girls. Yeah. Support the girls. Yeah. I'm like, all of the money more support the girls. Yeah. Rooney, all of the truck driver them. Big up on yourself. Rooney, you get lucky today. You scrape and come from 2 nil down. But nothing on for is a joke, man. You see it? But big up to all of the fans them. Big up to all of the truck driver them. Big up to Rico Dan. Big up to Ains. Big up to Newcastle Daily. And big up to Yasmin. Mom, thanks. Make sure that you stay tuned and subscribe, all right? Yeah. Anyway, big up on yourself, people. Nothing about love and respect. Until next time, for my boy Ryan LFC. People, we will be back later. May I come back with a bang, people. Look out for it. Pick up on the cell, people. No flow of respect. I'm out.